part two of the Willamette Bridge. This time we're going from Chickabee into Hoyle, Massachusetts. And we're going to explain this end of Willamette neighborhood and also what's on the northern tip of the Willamette Bridge. There's a railroad bridge, so we'll talk about that. So, anything you want to know today? Yeah, so are there any special or important um, components to the Chickabee side of the Willamette Bridge? Yes, there happen to have been really two interesting things. There was actually a train station right here. Both sides of the, this bridge had train stations where that railroad bridge you're going to see. So you're going to have passengers waiting right here. I'll show you where they got on to the, and off of the train. And also, interesting enough, there's the Hamden Brewery where they made alcohol here. The Willamette Bridge. Oh. Say Willamette Bridge now. So, can you tell us what's on the Willamette Bridge? Okay, once we got on the other side of the Willamette Bridge, part A or one covered towards the south, but the other part covers towards the north. And you're going to see a railroad bridge that's very old, and some of the old parts still there. All right, I'll explain exactly where it is. Okay, so you're ready for a great little tour here. Okay, so we have the Willamette Bridge in front of us. In this little sub neighborhood, you used to have the Hampton Brewery, and you still do. The building's still there from about 19 teens or so. It's right behind that concrete sign. It's actually pretty big. They made a lot of alcohol in there. And in the distance is a greenway with a concrete wall. That is where the train passengers would get on and off. So there was a railroad here, and on both sides you had fairly large railroad stations for passengers. Now this sign here is the same sign that you find on the western edge of the Willamette Bridge. There's one here on the eastern side. The Willamette Bridge is from 1891. About 10 years ago they fixed it up so the roadbed is in great shape now. The sidewalk's in great shape. Okay, so you see the start of the railroad bridge here. Okay, that's the Connecticut River Railroad Bridge over the Connecticut River in Chickabee and Holyoke. All right, the railroad, most of the trip from the north, stays on the western edge of the Connecticut River. But right here in Holyoke and Chicopee, it crosses over so we can get into Springfield, the biggest city in western New England. Now, not counting the, not counting the ends, which is rock from the earth, if you count the amount of buttresses in there, you get eight of them. Now, you notice that every other one is an old style of masonry rock, and then the Every odd number one from this direction is a modern or concrete. All right. So they have put buttresses in between the old. And so when this bridge was first made, it was made with only probably four buttresses on it. All right. But now it has eight. And the reason why floods have damaged it significantly through the years and they want to stabilize it even more with these beautiful buttresses uh, augmented by the more modern ones. Now that train bridge used to be the way that people could walk across the Connecticut River from Hoyle to Chickabee. So there's a walkway on there, right, besides just the railroad track there's a walkway. Until 1891, when this bridge was made with these two sidewalks, that was the 
only way you can walk on a bridge from Hoyoke to Chicopee. So imagine walking there, the side, one side has no reel and the other side has a reel. The reason why it has a reel on one side is because pedestrians have to walk on that edge and then the train would be on the near edge to us. Okay, for factories in the distance, you see electric grid. That's from one of the power stations on the canal. You see the back of the Hamden Paper Company, been around Hoyt 140 years. You start to see the back of the riverside here, mill number two. And the gap in that modern beige building was where White and Wyckoff would have been. And they had an enormous sign that it said that were White and Wyckoff. Train passengers and car passengers were able to see it, and that was great advertisement. Okay, now on the other side of the bridge, you get a nice look at the Connecticut River southbound towards Springfield. Now the people that put this bridge in wanted it, wanted it put in to Chickabee Center, about three miles away from here and the businessmen wanted that especially but they failed to get their wishes and it was put here and this became also a trolley bridge so the trolley went down the middle of the roadway and then the cars in the side now if you look at the boats the boats here are a mix of hexagonal and hemispherical rivets and the hemispherical ones were made on site but the bolted ones were put into place right at the site of the bridge uh, construction. You can see the weld mark. Those are from the factory itself. So you can see the beautiful Connecticut River in the distance. Hello. And you can also see the third level canals coming out there too. Okay, so this is a beautiful bridge. You can see way up there, it still goes with the second level canal, northbound. You would meet another bridge there, the old county bridge, now the Vietnam Veteran Bridge, and the Muller Bridge are up in that direction. Now down below here, if you could look through these spaces here, you'd see the buttresses down below. You might be able to see the flow of water down there. Right, but the buttresses are down below. Three of them have to be in place. Okay, now all utilities have to be carried across here. So electric lines are carried across here. Lights, gas, yes, are carried across here. And they even wanted to put a water line through here. And they put it right up to it. And that was part of... Um, during World War II, they didn't know if either Chickabee or Hoyt would have enough water, and so either one of them could have shared with each other, and they never ended up using that. Okay, now if you look over the bridge here, you can see this gorgeous masonry wall here with an iron railing. So this is actually made so that people can look over here and enjoy the view. Now what happens is that trees have grown up in the middle. These are invasive species trees and they ruin in the view now. That's sad because it's not supposed to be that way. Okay, so now we're back in the Willem Manson neighborhood. Remember this is a trolley neighborhood. And so a lot of apartments grew up around here. Stores, a few churches, right? And it be almost became a trolley suburb for Hulk. You can call it that. Okay, so I hope you come out and enjoy. Remember part one coming on the other side. And so catch that one at some point. Otherwise, thank you very much.